Pastor Stan again. I'm going to tackle another parable today. I've got my coffee. Coffee, cheers to you. I hope you have your beverage of choice. Let's do a little study. And as always, like and subscribe. And let's get the word out to other folks, family members and friends and others, your neighbors, that you can tune in to Pastor Stan on this YouTube channel and, and have some help on how to live the best life ever. All right, so here we go. This is the parable of the unforgiving creditor. The parable of the unforgiving creditor. And this is a parable that Jesus taught, a parable being a story, an earthly story that has a spiritual meaning. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Matthew chapter 18, beginning with verse 21. Then Peter, one of his disciples, came to Jesus and asked him, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Therefore, Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay. So his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owed to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, Please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. And they went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant! I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Wow, right? Whoa. That's heavy. That's how Jesus explains forgiveness. And why is forgiveness so important? Well, first of all, it's important because we are commanded to do it. Jesus commands us to forgive. We are under the commandment. He says, you've been forgiven, therefore you must forgive. It's very much like this story. I had so many sins and God forgave me through Jesus. Then I went out and I held grudges against other people who had sinned against me. I refused to forgive them. And the Lord said, that's not happening. You get forgiven, you must forgive. It's a direct commandment of God. So what happens if I continue to hold the grudge against people, whoever they might be? Well, I'm not just committing another sin. I am directly rebelling against God. I am telling God, I don't care if you forgave me or not, I'm not forgiving that person. Well, how do you think that's going to go for me? Think that's going to go well? Jesus died for my sins, died for my sins, so I could be forgiven, and then I refuse to forgive someone else. I'm going to hold in that grudge, right? Well, preacher, you don't know what she said or what he did. That's true. I don't know. God knows and still requires that I forgive because I know what I've done. I know how many times I've violated God's law, yet he forgave me. So he says, you will forgive. Basically, he says, you will forgive or else. <laughs> That's the problem. Yeah, with holding the grudge, I am under commandment to forgive. And if I don't forgive, if I hold a grudge and refuse to forgive, then I'm rebelling against God, and that is not going to go well for me. In fact, that's what Jesus says. He says, hey, here's the thing. Unless you forgive, unless you forgive, this is what my Heavenly Father is going to do to you. If you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart, he says you were, the, the, the servant was put in jail and tortured until he paid the last cent. 
Well, so we don't get put in jail, perhaps, but what happens to me? I had a high school student one time tell me this. We were talking about forgiveness in a youth group meeting. I asked what forgiveness was like, or what unforgiveness was like, yeah, unforgiveness. And she said, unforgiveness is like uh, holding a grudge. So I have a grudge against somebody. And so I, I'm mad at them and I want something bad to happen to them. So I drink poison and I expect them to get sick. That's what unforgiveness is like, she said. And I thought, whoa, that's heavy. That was deep right there. A high school student knew, understood that by rebelling against God, I was asking God to judge me over the thing about forgiveness, which is pretty huge in his, his sight because Jesus died for my sins so that I could have forgiveness. Big time, sacrifice. So if I refuse to forgive somebody, it's like me drinking poison and expecting them to get sick. Yeah, the whole point of the thing is, I'm drinking poison. I'm drinking poison. I'm getting sick. Well, how am I getting sick? Well, by refusing to forgive, uh, I become very angry. I'm a grudge holder then, see? I will hold a grudge at the drop of a hat. It takes nothing. I mean, in fact, I got a whole series of grudges I'm holding about, just about, about against everybody. Everybody. I even got a grudge against God who I prayed this one time and it didn't happen. So, you know, God doesn't answer prayer or something like that. All these grudges I'm holding makes me a very angry person. I'm mad at everybody. And then if I hold on to that unforgiveness long enough, that poison I keep drinking, I become bitter. You ever taste something that's really bitter? <clears throat> oh, I don't like that taste. Ah, that's terrible. Well, that's what happens. I become a very bitter, unforgiving grudge holder. And then no one wants to be around me. Everybody avoids me because everything that comes out of my mouth is negative. You never know that person. Everything that comes out of their mouth is negative. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Nobody wants to be around that person. And I end up living my life all alone with all of my grudges. How did that help me out? That's not living the best life possible. That's like living the worst life. I had all that possibility and I gave it all up so I could hold my little grudges. Well, the good news is Jesus understands how we are. And if I will even try to forgive someone who's offended me, somebody who's hurt me severely, I mean, people have overcome great injury, great trauma, and forgiven. Why? Because God helped them. And I readily admit, in my own humanness, the way I am generally, without God's help, can't forgive. Refuse to do it. But I say, Lord, I know what you say here. I want to obey so I'm going to pray for that person every day that you're going to bless them if it's the last thing I do. I'm going to pray this prayer because I know you commanded me to forgive. And guess what happens? After a while, I found out I cannot hate on someone. I'm praying for God to bless. And the Lord helps me eventually have compassion for that person and the record they've made of their lives. And I forgive them. And I am free from that forgiveness. That unforgiveness, I'm free from it, and I have forgiveness in my heart. And thanks be to God now, I am free from all of that. And I can live true life. I'm working towards the best life ever. And that's what forgiveness does for me. So it's the command of God. And with God's help, you can do it too. You can do it too. And that's my hope and prayer for you, that you will be able to do this. All right, so there's the parable of the unforgiving creditor. Don't be that person. Be the forgiving creditor, yeah, just as you have been forgiven. All right, see you next time. Bye.